Mono Lake was born three quarters of a million years ago when its tectonic basin was formed by faulting and downwarping of the Earth's crust. The lunar landscape and natural spires of the oldest lake in America have become the stage for one of environmental activism's greatest success stories. Its recent restoration is here to show the world that through collaborative efforts, intelligent planning, and efficient implementation, we can continue to move forward as a society without jeopardizing the delicate balance of nature. The Mono Lake story starts back in the 1940s. In 1941, Los Angeles began diverting water from the tributary streams to Mono Lake here in the Mono Basin, putting them into an aqueduct system and transporting them 350 miles to the south and delivering that water to the city for a water supply for the residents of Los Angeles. When uh, David Gaines and a group of uh, fellow scientists showed up in 1976 and uh, conducted an ecological study of the Mono Basin, they were shocked to find a number of very large impacts. Uh, because the lake was going down, it was getting saltier, and as it got saltier, it was undermining the food chain that supports millions of migratory birds that come to Mono Lake. Eighty-five percent of the state's nesting California gulls come here in the summer, raise their young before going back to the coast in the winter. So they realized that if the lake got too salty, brine shrimp and alkali flies would be gone and you would not be able to support these bird populations, really leading to a full ecological collapse of the lake. At the same time, they found that dust storms were being treated on the exposed lake bed. It contained toxic minerals, hazardous to human health. So a huge set of problems all coming together uh, that was identified in 1976. David Gaines started the Mono Lake Committee in 1978, and the goal was always to find a solution that allowed LA some water, recognizing LA has real water needs, but to do that in a way that protects Mono Lake. By the 1980s, there was a lot of support for protecting Mono Lake. California didn't want to have Mono Lake collapse as an ecosystem. We didn't want to have a toxic dust bowl here in the Mono Basin. And so that led to a very prolonged court fight uh, about what was legal and what was possible. There were a number of important victories along the way. It's a huge California Supreme Court decision that came down and said, there was a mistake when Los Angeles was allowed to divert this much water, it's too much. It's damaging the public trust. We need to go back and relook at this water rights decision. LA has a claim to some water, but clearly it can't be this much. It has to be something less, and we need to figure out what that is. We worked with the state government to get a state park created at Mono Lake uh, that would at least protect and manage the, the lake itself and the shoreline lands. We worked with the federal government to get a Forest Service scenic area that would protect the surrounding Mono Basin lands. Uh, it all led to a water rights decision that actually revoked LA's right to take water from the Mono Basin from these streams and then reissued it but with new conditions. And the new conditions require that Mono Lake be maintained at an ecologically sound level. Quite a bit of work went into identifying what that level is. Surface elevation, 6,392 feet above sea level. When we won the water rights decision that changed how much water LA could take from Mono Lake, we initiated uh, efforts to try to get Los Angeles to change its management of the aqueduct system. Don't go take it from some other natural resource. Let's look at water conservation, water recycling, uh, and local water use solutions that could offset the diversions from the Mono Basin. And then we were able to work with the state legislature and uh, identify some money that could be uh, provided to Los Angeles to fund water reclamation programs. It's about $40 million, and that money uh, was available to LA. It could be used to build water reclamation facilities that would provide uh, new water for Los Angeles. Ultimately, by the 1990s, we were able to actually get that program implemented and reach a, uh, a project of agreement that is, uh, is, is in fact offsetting diversions from the Mono Basin and helping LA meet its real water needs in the city and Mono Lake recover at the same time. One example is the ultra-low flush toilet program that Los Angeles has done, saving more water annually through toilet replacement than was ever diverted from Mono Lake on an annual basis. Landscaping, uh, using native plants, drought tolerant plants, stormwater capture uh, are all part of that effort. 
Los Angeles has a huge potential with water uh, recycling or water reclamation where they're uh, treating wastewater uh, in the city so that it can be reused. That reuse would be for uh, irrigation, golf courses, freeway plantings, parks that don't need to have uh, fresh snowmelt water. The reuse of that water offsets a, a great demand for imported water. That's part of the success story of Mono Lake. And LA used to be famous as a water wasting city. The reality is much different now and the city is really uh, at the forefront as a leader of water conservation um, in California and in the West. They're able now in Los Angeles to supply a million more residents than they had 30 years ago with the same amount of water. It's a tremendous uh, conservation success that really shows the connection between the urban environment and the natural environment, between the cities and the rural areas in the state, and how uh, what happens in the city matters to what happens up here. We are seeing some really promising signs on the ground. The lake is rising toward its long-term management level, and we're seeing some great recovery and improvement of habitat, but you have to stay vigilant, you have to make sure those programs stay in place commonly discussed in the environmental world are the three R's, you know, reduce, reuse, and recycle. And in terms of water, I think Mono Lake really uh, showed that this is not only possible, but that it's the successful path to a sustainable future. It's one of the few water stories and few environmental stories, I think, where we've actually reached a very good solution, and we're now in the implementation phase to really uh, make it into a reality on the ground.